In New Zealand at that time, 250 babies were dying of cop death every year. And within two years, that had fallen to 120. It was staggering. We um, identified that sleep position, laying, laying babies on their tummy, was a very big factor. Smoking was a, uh, a factor. Breastfeeding seemed to be protective. And bed shearing, um, mothers sleeping with their babies, because it's usually the mother. These also incre increased the risk. Cure Kids funded a lot of the uh, materials, oh. posters, brochures, um, organised the meetings. Um, so they were re really important. And then a lot of our projects since then have been have had funding from Cure Kids, which have helped support salaries of myself and Ed and other people that have worked on those projects. Cure Kids have particularly funded um, much of the research that I have done on um, infants. Uh, and in the SUDI space. So uh, originally with Shirley Tonkin, it was the um, the car seat studies and looking at babies and doing sleep studies on babies in the car seat. In 2012 to 14, we did a peepee pod study in South Auckland because the peepee pods were becoming available as an option for a baby bed. Um, but it was to the point where we really couldn't convince people to spend money on baby beds because it hadn't been proven as an intervention to prevent SUDI. So we said, well, let's study it. So we did a, um, a cure kit funded study in South Auckland with uh, Dr Adrian Trenholm and the community health workers in, within maternity there. Um, and then more recently the research has really been on developing up the safe sleep calculator. What we learnt with the um, SIDS work or the SUDI work uh, was a stage thing and we, we were actually learning as we went along. But when we applied it to the stillbirth we were actually able to condense 30 years into 10 years and Cure Kids has actually funded a project to, um, on big data and so I've been working with Microsoft amazingly enough in the US using US data to actually give us insights into uh, SUDI. Cure Kids is very different to the other funders because they're really focused on uh, children and their health I think one of the important things is, is that they've taken important health issues and put money behind it to actually address these really serious problems. They do care about investing, but they also, they do look after us as well. You know, keeping us, you know, motivated around the research that we do um, when, when we do hit those hard spots and that support just means a huge amount as a researcher. I've had now monitored a, and mentored a large number of people that have gone on to do PhDs and John was my very first uh, PhD student. And then I now also um, encourage other researchers and now I'm, you know, I've got some paediatric fellows who are working with me on research so I think it's sort of passing it down the line isn't it really? Yeah. I've been on the Cure Kids Medical and Scientific Advisory Committee. There is a large number of applications made to Cure Kids mm -hmm. to fund, fund research. It's of, often a difficult task choosing the best from them. We use a whole lot of different processes. Um, obviously, the most critical one is the scientific merit. Is it going to answer the question that is um, being posed? Cure Kids have funded lots of research that's made a huge Im impact on child health. Not enough thought is, goes into the fact that they are the future of the country. And the healthier those children are, the more they are going to contribute to our society in, in the future. And you know, that's where Cure, Cure Kids will continue to fund research. Look at how many lives it's saved. Look at how many lives it's made better.